Hi Tenfold, my name is Lindy from the Northwest. I'm really struggling with this bio question, so I wanted to ask if you guys can please help me out. Thank you. A diagram represents the structures of the skin in two people. Okay, we've got person A and we have person B. Both people were in the same room at the same time. Okay, now if they were in the same room at the same time, we were assuming that the temperature in the room is the same too, all right? Um, but one person started exercising and the other person was sitting still. The skin temperature on both people were measured after 10 minutes. So we have to keep this temperature constant as well. That's why they have the same things that are happening to them. Now, if we look at person A, <coughs> these blood capillaries here are constricted. Okay, they're constricted. You see, they're all thin and small. And the sweat gland is not putting out any sweat. So here, there is no sweat. And for person B, well, look how large these capillaries are. These capillaries are dilated. And we call this vaso for veins, vascular system, blood vessels, vaso dilation. Okay? And this will be vaso, it's constricted, vaso constriction. This will also happen if a person um, gets a big fright and there's a whole bunch of adrenaline, the skin goes nice and pale because the blood vessels pull away from it. You get nauseous because the blood vessels in your stomach and your digestive system constrict. That's what makes you so nauseous. Why? We need to get the blood pressure to the muscles which must fight and flight run like anything quickly and that's where we want the blood because we want to get the oxygen and the nutrients to the muscles we don't care about the skin having a healthy glow okay so vasoconstriction vasodilation and when the sweat glands getting lots and lots and lots of blood look what it does it produces sweat and the sweat is then going to evaporate and cool the system down okay so which person here do you think is exercising a or B? Well, clearly people, the person that is sweating is going to be person B. Now, because we want to cool the body down, give two visible reasons for your answer to question one. Now let's look. I'm not even going to write them down. We are going to talk them through. What are the two visible reasons for saying that it's person B that's exercising? Vasodilation means the blood vessels are open and the sweat from the sweat gland, which is now going to be evaporating. Those are your two reasons, all right? And you can see them. You don't even have to be Einstein. You just have to look at the diagram. It says, name one hormone that would have the same effect on the blood vessels that are observed in person one. Now, if we, I mean person A. So if we look at person A, what hormone is going to cause the same setup? It is going to be add... Renalin. Why? It is your fight and flight hormone. Blood capillaries constrict to the largest organ in your body, which is the skin. So the skin's going to go pale. And that blood is directed to the muscles where we need the energy. Let's just see if there's another question. Ha! Ah, after 10 minutes, the surface temperature <coughs> of each person was made. The, the skin surface temperature was measured. The results are person A, look, 37.2. That is normal. But if we look at person B, it's 36.6. .6. So it is going to be cooler. And why is it cooler? Because of the evaporation of the sweat. And it says, explain why the skin temperature of person A is higher after 10 minutes. Well, people, just use your common sense. Person A is not sweating, so there is no evaporation of the sweat from the skin and to cool the skin down. The blood vessels have constricted, so there's no heat being lost by radiation and conduction. You know, when someone's been exercising, you stand next to them, you can actually feel the heat radiating off them. 
and they are soaked in sweat. Why are they soaked in sweat? Think about it. They soaked in sweat because they have to cool their body down. So if we look at the skin temperature of person A, why is it higher? Let's just quickly jot that down. Um, I'm going to just write it in here. Mm, let me just put my glasses on maybe and that will be better. See when people get a bit old. Um, let's extend this page. Boy, it's like a comedy of errors here. So what, why would it be higher? First of all, there is no sweat being produced. So therefore, if there's no sweat, there's no evaporation. And therefore, no cooling. That's the sweat. But then we also have to look at something else, which was the blood capillaries. We have vasocon striction and therefore there is no conduction or radiation of heat from blood to the surface of the skin okay now let's have a look we have another question and this question is actually a very very cute little question so and this question, oh, I can't remember who it was from. I've got a piece of paper here, so I'm going to cheat. It's Dewey. Dewey sent us another question. And, well, people, this is a really cool question. It's a quick one. Hi, Tenfold. It's Dewey here from the West. And um, I need help with this diagram. Please help me. Okay, very important. This is exam technique. First thing they're going to do, and you're going to see this in all your life science exams during question one, it says, study the diagram below to show the endocrine glands in a human. And you've got your little diagram, which you're supposed to know anyway. First thing you do when you get a diagram, people, exam technique, you write the labels in. So what is that? It is the pituitary gland. Okay, the pituitary gland. Right, and it sits, it is, the pituitary gland is also called, by the way, the master gland. Why? Because it gets all its instructions from the little structure just above it called the hypothalamus. Okay, and the hypothalamus will tell the pituitary, listen bud, you need to secrete A, B, C, D because these are the things happening in the body. B sits here like a little bow tie. And this little bow tie is the thyroid. All right, it's a thyroid gland. And tell me, what does the thyroid do? Without the thyroid, we have a huge problem. The thyroid controls our metabolism. Um, you get a lot of the girls um, over the last year, two, three years, have had huge issues with a disease, autoimmune disease called Quasimodo's. And what that's from is that you end up with a, a sluggish, lazy thyroid gland. Why? Because they take fat burners. Girls, no fat burners. You must take it from the boys. They eat what they like. And when they need to <coughs> lose a bit of weight, they just cut out carbs. Okay? Don't take fat burners. They are bad for you. Do more exercise. Cut down on your carbs. That's a little life lesson from me to you. Okay? So here we go. We've got the thyroid. We want the thyroid to work well because that's what gives us our energy. <coughs> Let's just get this to move down a bit. And then... If we look at the rest of the glands that we have here, we've got D, or let's do C first. That's pointing to this little guy. We did this earlier. That is the pancreas. And the pancreas, remember, is the only organ that is both exocrine and endocrine. Okay, exocrine function all your exocrine glands in your body have ducts and they will secrete a useful substance through the duct, either into a cavity or like a sweat gland onto the surface. Mammary glands secrete milk out of the body to the baby. Um, <coughs> all your digestive juices 
are released into the digestive system by exocrine glands, okay? Saliva, exocrine gland, okay? So that's the, the pancreas has an exocrine function and an endocrine. Every other gland in your body is either exocrine or endocrine. Now, endocrine glands are very special. Endocrine glands secrete hormones. And endocrine glands are ductless. Therefore, they secrete hormones directly into the blood. Okay? And the blood in your body is like a highway and a, and, 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 and a map of roads. And with that, the hormone, the messenger, can get anywhere in your body if it travels along the blood and it gets to a target organ. And there, it will tell the hormone, doesn't do anything. It tells the target organ, or we say in life sciences, it causes the target organ to perform a function. So, let's look at an example. We did, um, the, we did the pancreas earlier and we did the islets of Langerhans. So, your blood sugar is low, the, beta, the alpha cells in the islets of Langerhans pancreas, they're the endocrine glands, they or endocrine portion, they will then say, okay, hold on, the blood sugar level's low, so stimulate the release of glucagon, and the alpha cells release glucagon, glucagon travels in the blood, because it's a hormone, in the blood to where? Target organ, liver and muscle cells. And says, hey guys, please can you convert gluc uh, glycogen, stored glucose, into glucose, um, so we can increase this blood sugar so we can get a bit of energy, all right? Or the opposite, blood sugar's high. You've eaten a chocolate, you've had a cool drink, um, you've had 25 sandwiches, you've had a burger and chips, and, well, your body just says, whoa, blood sugar's up there. So what happens? The body says, no, 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 we need to bring that blood sugar down. We need to bring it down. So the islets of Langerhans, the beta cells this time, are stimulated, and it says, listen, beta cells, Please release insulin. The insulin stops glucagon from working, but it tells the liver and muscle cells, those target organs, guys, you now have to convert glycogen to, uh, at least glucose to glycogen, because if we have too much glucose around the cells, it's gonna pull water. And what's gonna happen then? We're gonna have a huge problem. We're gonna dehydrate, and we're gonna have, the cells are just gonna go and they're gonna die. We don't want that. It's dangerous. So we must store excess glucose as glycogen and the blood sugar level comes down. And that, people, is a negative feedback system. That is homeostasis. It's making sure that we are balancing this internal environment to make sure that we survive. And that's everything in your life is a balancing act. Too much of one thing is bad for you. Always make sure you balance everything. Okay, so we've now got our pancreas, only gland in the body which is both exocrine and endocrine, because remember it releases pancreatic juice into the digestive system, that's the exocrine part. Then we have D, which sits, it's pointing to these little glands sitting on top of the kidneys. Now the kidneys are your renal process, okay, or your renal system. And it sits on top of the kidneys, so we've added it to the renals, so those are your, that's how you remember it, add renal glands. We've added it to the renals, adrenal. Now, people, please look at this, adrenal. Which hormone do you think adrenal glands produce? They produce adrenaline. I sometimes think someone without an imagination came up with some of the names that we have to study in life sciences. I mean, your adrenal glands produce adrenaline. You can't forget it. And what does adrenaline do for you? Listen, adrenaline's good for you. It's that butterfly feeling when you see a guy or a girl that you like very much. It is that sagging feeling when you see a question in the exam that you haven't studied for. So study a little bit every time, every day, so that you don't have to ever feel that feeling. Um, it is that fright when someone, you walk around the corner and, oops, you see somebody. That's adrenaline. And it is um, an amazing hormone because it prepares you for anything that comes. You just mustn't have it too often, okay? Otherwise, you end up with a whole bunch of issues and stress. Right, it says identify the letter. People, the letter. 
If you write the, a gland's words names down, you are going to get zero. You must put the letter. So it says of the endocrine gland that secretes glucagon. Well, come on, we already know this from our diagram. It is going to be the pancreas, so it will be C. Okay, now... Identify the letter of the endocrine gland that controls metabolic processes. Come on, which one here? Which one here? It is the thyroid. So, it, do we write thyroid? No, they're asking for the letter, so we put B. Then, they say, identify the letter of the endocrine gland that secretes adrenaline comes from the adrenal gland sitting on top of the kidney. There we go. It is number D. I mean, how easy was that? It's basic. So just learn your diagrams, people. It's so easy to learn from a diagram. Now it says, name two hormones secreted by A. And if we go up here, what was A? It was the pituitary gland. So let's put that down here. Let's just extend this page. Okay, so two hormones from, from the pituitary, and I'm writing pituitary here so that you remember, pituitary, um, so that you remember, we have, first of all, thyroid stimulating hormone. Guess what that, ho what that hormone does? It's called the thyroid stimulating hormone. It is going to stimulate the thyroid. Um, we've got growth hormone, we've got luteinizing hormone, we have follicle stimulating hormone, and then we have prolactin. All right, people, prolactins to make milk. Easy to remember. Please make sure you understand all of that. Learn your diagrams. So we are going to go for an ad break, but before we do, remember to submit your questions. Plant hormones and, uh, and evolution for next week via WhatsApp, via the Tenfold Education Tutor System, all right? See you in a minute.